George talked to us about all the unusual and rare parts of the preserve. I'm going to talk to you more about the more simple things that we all can relate to when we're walking around in, in the forest fringe and the upland. This is a picture of uh, Ken Bevis. He uh, came to visit us at the preserve to talk to us about uh, some creating some wildlife habitat through some uh, practices that we were going to initiate, uh, mainly thinning the forest. It was logged in the mid-90s, and a lot of stuff has grown up since that needs to thin it out, so we can see the forest for the trees. <laughs> so uh, his suggestion was that we could create these habitat piles in our thinnings, and so he enthusiastically jumped in this old slash pile and started stacking up stuff to to prove his point. <clears throat> so the following year, we had a work party for thinning, and we tried to uh, utilize some of his uh, techniques that he talked to us about. So here we're stacking up some of the uh, thicker debris that we find on the ground, and sort of make a cavity in the middle. <coughs> And then uh, when we thinned, then we piled, on, piled all the stuff on top of the, the cavity there, hoping to create a nice little hide, hiding place for weasels, mice, salamanders, what have you. There, there was not a lot of natural debris left out there because of the way they logged, they tree-length everything down to the land and then piled all the limbs and tops in, in one central location. So. A uh, healthy forest needs a, a bunch of hiding places out there, and specifically cavities. So cavities are kind of uh, one of my passions. Not the kind that grow in your or the kind that exists in some of us between our ears. But uh, cavities for critters to live in. You know? Everybody, pretty much everybody, needs a cavity. Like, this room's a cavity. We can make our own cavities. A lot of the creatures in the woods, they can't make their own cavities. They count on trees like this, a broken top tree and snags. The wood gets softer, woodpeckers <coughs> excavate and make cavities. Woodpeckers are the primary cavity creators in the forest. A lot of creatures are secondary cavity nesters. They can't make their own cavities. They count on people like me. <laughs> to make some. Well, the, the hope is to attract uh, some cavity nesting ducks like buffleheads, golden eyes, wood ducks, hooded mergansers, and the like. The, these boxes that are a little smaller are for owls, and the smaller ones are for bluebirds and, and swallows. So this is the, the first batch that uh, I created, and we had a work party to install them. Now that's a much better picture. Here's Rachel, she's getting some of the boxes ready, the owl boxes and the wood duck boxes. We put uh, shavings and sawdust in there. And this is a detail of a wood duck box with a little ladder made of hardware cloth in there for when the baby ducks can climb up, they can exit the hole that way. Because the babies don't hang out in there, but for at the most a day till they're all hatched, then they all bail out, <laughs> crash to the ground, and go off on a parade to find the lake. <laughs> so that's the first one we mounted. And that was pretty easy because it's a nice bare bowl on the tree. This one was a lot more difficult. Uneven sod ground and limbs, and that's a uh, Harris Dunkelberger was tremendous help. That was a tough install. Way to go. Thanks again, Harris. <laughs> so there I'm putting up a flying squirrel box. And uh, here's our conservation coordinator. She's not only a talented singer and computer quiz, but she uh, is very versatile with wielding a hammer there in that mountain box, too. So I want you all know, to know she's just not a pretty face up here. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And that's the results of her effort. There's, yeah, well, people that are walking the trails and aren't familiar, Julie wrote on the bottom what they were. So, so Harris is putting up a swallow box on one of the power poles along the road through the preserve. So we're hoping to get these little owls. There's a Rachel putting up a owl box, and there it is. So we're hoping to get little owls like, or probably not boreal, but sawhead owls, maybe a screech owl, maybe a pygmy owl with nesting ones. So after the first season, it's time to check them out, see what we got. It's like Christmas, <laughs> only the this. The present may jump out in your face and get you low. It was also hunting season, so I wore my red hat, so at least they'd just shoot me in the body. <laughs> so there I'm peeking into the duck box, seeing what there is in there. And meanwhile, Julie's standing down there with the camera ready. And <laughs> so that's a flying squirrel. Isn't that just the cutest I know. <laughs> so this is uh, the, what one of the nests of the flying squirrel looks like. You can see it's composed mostly of hair and some bark strips from the brush, some chunks of the shavings from the bottom of the box, and Briaria lichen. And Briaria lichen, as people call it, deer moss or witch's hair, the, the stuff that hangs out of the trees, very much in the forest fringe at Lost Lake. They like that damp air and the Engelman spruce. This is a flying squirrel box that had uh, some pine grass stuffed in there, and a little bit of bryoria on the top. Uh, some of the pine grass is rolled into balls like that, and I think Dale Swedberg told me that he thought that was something that red squirrels do, and we don't know why. Maybe easy transportation. Flying squirrel nest box. You can see some of the detail of the of the box. I have some flying squirrel boxes over here that are slightly different uh, design, but the idea of this picture was actually taken by our next speakers, Chloe and Clement, that, that were there doing their thing and walking along, and this is in one of the swallow boxes. <laughs> and, uh, so that, that was pretty exciting to, to see that. So Sort of in conclusion, what we learned just in the first year is that there's not very enough cavities out there in the forest for the flying squirrels, much less have any left over for any of the other things. <laughs> it's, not, it's not uncommon for, for years to go by before birds will discover a cavity because they're not used to them being there and bang, all of a sudden there's cavities everywhere. But we hope in time to uh, have some of those cool little owls and some ducks nesting in those boxes and, and some swallows too. And so I think I'll make some more flying squirrel <laughs> But clearly, any sort of cavity in the woods is going to be used most of us have, that have forested property, we probably have flying squirrels. People just don't know that they do because they're strictly nocturnal. 